when using the grid method for drawing out, I found it handy to have an A3 clear envelope with a piece of black paper inside and on the envelope using a permanent marker I've done one side with half inch squares and the other side with one inch squares so that you can put the photograph or picture or whatever you want to transfer inside the envelope, line it up with some squares and from there you can transfer the grid onto your drawing paper or pad and with knowing that they are half inch or one inch squares you can either increase or decrease the size of the actual photograph that you're going to transfer. Once you have the grid laid out and you're happy with the conversion of size or in fact keeping it the same size you would then measuring across start to work from your photograph or picture onto the grid and the easiest way is to work square to square don't look at the whole thing as a finished product to start with just do the pattern that is in each square and at the end everything will work out and everything will be in the right place and we'll be doing this later on with either this photograph or another one but first of all I'll draw out the grid on this piece of paper and then we'll start to transfer Okay, I've drawn out the grid now and I'm going to start putting in the various shapes that are in each of the parts. Now I've got a 10 by 12 which I've measured across and I'm going to start from this end 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so I'm going to go across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this particular square comes in about a third of the way up and almost to the corner so if I put my marks in before I actually do the line to where I'm happy with where they're going to be and I just put in that part of it the next square I'm coming down is just going across this corner Okay, and the next one is coming roughly halfway onto that square. So I'm going to mark it and bring it down. Okay, so here we are now. We're just doing the squares as they come down. This one is going to about just under the halfway from this particular point. So if I mark it there and join up again. And this one again is near to the end and bring it down. And this is how we will continue through the painting until all the squares are matched up and everything is in the right place. And we'll carry on now until we've completed the drawing and then we'll come back to it. Okay, we've got it mapped out now, all the main shapes. And what we need to do now is remove the grid lines uh, from the, around the outside and the inside of the face. And... I've done them a little bit heavier this time so that you can actually see what I'm doing but I'll start to carefully remove the grid lines and I found the best way to get rid of any of the waste from the rubber and the paper is using a soft brush rather than blowing 
the, the bits away which um, unfortunately sometimes can result in a little bit of spittle ending up on the paper and things smudging. So to save that temptation use a soft brush. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. Any soft brush will do. This one is a very cheap one that came in a set from a certain company who sells art materials and books. Very cheap on the high street uh, but it's ideal for doing this sort of work. And that's how we'll carry on now until we've removed all of the lines and hopefully not damaging the surface of the paper. Underneath the paper I'm working on a piece of foam board as you can see this is used as well for painting uh, and pastel work I do on foam board uh, underneath the paper just gives you that bit of a softer backing than working on a hard surface. So we'll carry on now doing this and then we'll start to hopefully do the drawing in pencil and with any luck at the end of it it may look like the photograph only with me and portraits that is never guaranteed because a lot of the time I've tried portraits and if it's somebody who may be anything from middle aged and above usually look as if I've dug them up and hit them with a shovel um, anybody young they can end up looking as if they've missed the ambulance so I hope that won't be the case with this one but hey who knows all it takes is practice <laughs> and that's usually how I end up with practice pieces that I wouldn't want to show anybody except the bottom of the bin So I don't put myself down as a portrait artist, I don't put myself down as any sort of artist really. I'm just somebody who enjoys having a go and if it doesn't work out, well, there's only me that's ever disappointed. And I just put it down as a learning curve. And if you look at it that way all the time, hopefully it will stop some of the frustration that I know people can have with some of the work. But hey, what have you lost if it doesn't work out? A bit of time, a bit of patience, a bit of paper, and if you're painting a few drops of paint, pastel, acrylics, whatever medium it is, that's all you've lost. And you haven't really wasted your time if it hasn't worked out because hopefully you learn by mistakes. I keep having a go and believe me, sometimes it puts you off so much you don't feel like doing anything again for weeks on end. But eventually, you take up the pencils again, the paints, whatever it is, and start to throw colour around. And it doesn't work out, do it on the back so you've used both sides of the paper 
and uh, to save it for future reference so that you can see how you have developed or throw it in the bin and have another go as I say there's no harm in it you're not hurting anyone and eventually you will get something that you're quite happy with that's what I'm looking forward to with my portraits that eventually the finished product will actually look like the person is supposed to be and not somebody who needs to see a doctor immediately and I hope not with this one because actually it's my grandson so I'm hoping that it will work out if it doesn't hey I've got the photograph well I hope that helps with using the grid method and have fun with the drawings.